I'm Chef Nassim at Sofre Restaurant in Brooklyn, and this is my vegan dish called Anar Beach, cauliflower steaks on an Anar Beach sauce. Right now we are doing a dish from north of Iran. I try to bring regional cuisine to our menu. I always have a dish from south and a dish from kind of like mid section of Iran and north of Iran. North of Iran, uh, many people think of Iran as desert, but they can't possibly imagine how lush and green it is. It's, I always compare it to like Hawaii in terms of moisture. They have ton of herbs that I, it, I don't even know and I don't even get them here. They are, locals know they pick them and they enhance their dishes with that. They do a lot of, they eat ton of fish, egg fish, because they're by the Caspian Sea, but also ton of herb dishes with eggs and lots of legumes. So I am always inspired. I love their dishes. I'm not from there. I really make effort to bring it as authentically as possible with ton of respect to the locals and great apologies that I don't have those amazing um, herbs that they do have. Uh, one thing that they have and is particular to this dish, this dish called Anar Beach. Anar Beach is all these herbs plus walnuts. They use a lot of nuts in their dishes and a lot of eggs. In this one, I, um, this dish originally comes with tiny meatballs. They serve it with the small meatballs with all these ingredients. Um, the flavoring enhancer is pomegranate molasses. I don't have their pomegranate molasses. This is what I can get here. It's kind of sweet and sour. In the north of Iran, they use uh, wild pomegranate, which is incredibly sour and beautiful. When we use the word sour, it's a compliment for our cooking. It's not something like sour. You don't make your face like that. You, we want our dishes to be sour. We want to punch your like mouth with ton of acid. And I try to do that by supplementing lemon juice or lime, fresh lime juice, because I don't have that kind of sour. In this particular dish, because everything is kind of mushed together, I uh, food process lots of onion. Because I don't want all that liquid and I want to brown it, I just put it in a hot pan. My pan is hot, so it starts browning right away and uh, it gets all the liquid out. Uh, once all the liquid out, they start sticking, then I start frying it. All my herbs are here cilantro, parsley, scallion, mix of uh, dry herbs of all of that, and some mint. There is an herb in the north of Iran that we don't have here. Mint is the closest to it, so that's my substitute. So I'm just gonna put all my herbs in the pan directly. No oil, nothing, because they're gonna release some moisture. I want that moisture out before adding any oil, because if I add oil, I prevent release of the moisture, but also they absorb, they have to keep adding, and I don't want to do that. So I leave the dry herbs when uh, my air platter starts working. I have a dish from north of Iran, which is a smoked egg plant with poached eggs. It's pretty authentic. But this dish, as I told you, I tweaked, I removed the meat. Because to me, first of all, by having the nuts already has a full protein, full range of meal. And I also realized that we get a lot of vegan guests here and we try to accommodate them by removing the egg, by removing the dairy. I just wanted one dish in the menu that it fully represents a beautiful vegan dish without substitute or without removing anything. And uh, I came up with that. You see it's becoming dry, nice and dry, a little bit more. I wanted to start the sticking before I add oil. This still has some moisture. I'm gonna add the dry herbs to it while it has some moisture and some mint. You see we use excessive amount of onion compared to the rest of the ingredients but I treat the onions down, I cook them down. If I don't do what I'm doing, like really caramelizing them, the dish will be very like, you eat a lot of onion and, and it, it won't be incorporated. And I do in a steps. Like right now I work the onion, then I add the garlic and then uh, turmeric. It's just 
step by step, you build up the dish. The most important part is after they all come together on a very, very low heat, cooks for another hour. Very gentle heat, so all these flavors bend together. Although there's nothing to cook, like onion is cooked, garlic is cooked, this sauce is almost cooked, but for the flavors to develop, they need that low and a slow and a long time. Just, Just mostly trying. browned. Yeah, caramelized mostly. Translucent, no. By translucent, I should be adding ton of oil, and I don't want to do that. To get that translucence, I, if I start adding oil, I'll get in that heat, I get that translucent part. But then my dish will be all, you will be tasting olive oil. <laughs> you, know, you won't be. I try to keep the integrity of the dishes by constantly, and this is a smaller scale for like three people, but when we do for restaurant, it's a massive pot and I have my cooks standing and scraping the bottom, just like what I'm doing now. What, I don't want to overcook my vegetable, but I want to, uh, once they get in contact with heat, they develop aroma. If you notice, like the kitchen is filled with aroma. But we, we constantly scrape, we stand on top of our pot, and we constantly scrape our pot, so we get a uniform browning on the herbs. There are a ton of vegetables. I, I find, because this has so much flavor, pomegranate, nuts, herbs, I just thought a plain pickled cauliflower is the perfect match. But a sh a, another chef may have another idea. I love pickling, and I kind of pickle almost anything. But um, in this particular dish, I pickle it in vinegar and turmeric in advance, so it's par cooked, but not fully. It has tooth to it. Still, I'm going to put it on, on the grill to get the grill mark and also the grill flavor. I base it a little bit with the pomegranate molasses towards the end, put it in the oven to keep on cooking. So when the, we plate the dish, this is the centerpiece. So they have, we call it cauliflower steak. Uh, the sauce is an our beach. So when we uh, are ready for service, the sauce is done ahead of time. The order comes in, the cauliflower goes on, on the grill, the sauce gets heated up, proportion. And right now I'm demoing, I'm doing all of that at once, but that's how we do it for the, for the service. Again, lots of garlic for this dish. Now mix again. Always turmeric. This signals to me if the vegetables are cooked enough because I want them to start releasing their aroma. They need a little bit more. The garlic and onion cooking next to them, they trick my nose, so. Uh, you see right now, the, the vegetables have browned, the herbs have browned very well, and there is a very nice, uh, nice aroma. This is ready. I like to deglaze my pan with lemon juice because I try to limit uh, unnecessary flavor, which is water, since I'm gonna add lemon juice. And also lemon juice has some kind of a sugar, so it just, it already has flavor. So I, some people toast their walnuts. I disagree, I don't, because it's everything already browned, so we don't need another um, level, so it's, this is it maybe a little bit more. I eyeball it. I want a good amount of walnuts in there. Add the remaining lemon juice, some pomegranate molasses, which is the main flavor, some salt, some pre-grounded pepper. This is supposed to be a very thick sauce, so I'm gonna add water carefully. I can always add more. I just put enough water to get this thing going without making it liquid. Always depending on the kind of pomegranate molasses you use, you want it sweet and sour, but more leaning towards sour. So this is kind of sour, it doesn't, it needs a little bit more. So I just put a little bit of just sugar, not, not much. Some more salt. Lower the heat to very low 
and let it come together for about an hour. Mm -hmm. As for the cauliflower steaks, when we do it for service, all this grill is burning hot. So the grill is hot, like burning hot. So I get beautiful grill marks. Here, I'm just, for the sake of demo, I'm not happy with the mm. color I get, but use your imagination. Let me just, um, <laughs> before I turning it over, I want some pomegranate on top, just because I'm gonna flip it. So this is ready, it goes in the oven. In 10 minutes, it's ready. I like to serve this dish with plain basmati rice, and that's how we recommend it to our guests. We really take pride in uh, our long grain, fluffy rice. You see that? They're all separated beautifully. And we just, this is garnished a little bit with saffron, the beautiful. This is the rice for the dish. I like to play with texture and also color. This is kind of a kind of a not very attractive sauce, full of flavor, but not very attractive. This is my pickle. I have so many pickles, and I, depending on a dish, I always play with them. Uh, this is red cabbage with cumin. Currently, we are serving this dish with that. I play sometimes olive oil, but. Because uh, I want to give add more flavor, a little bit of chili oil on top, just to give it a spice and also some color. A little bit of black pepper. This is micro cilantro. That's all I have nine hours. Sometimes I put micro mint because the, mic the mint is in the sauce. It enhances it, but right now this is micro cilantro, yes. This is Anor Beach, our uh, vegan dish in the menu.